Hi guys, so Chris again here from Adaptuition and this is the last video in the set that we're doing with the solutions for the POA Jan 2020's question 4. Alright, so once again, um, I'm doing short form videos because of the situation in Trinidad with regards to COVID-19, the coronavirus, right? We have no school until April the 20th and I know some people may not have access to online school from their school or maybe their lessons teachers or whatever the case is and people in the Caribbean also have issues as well. So I'm doing these short form videos to put out more videos that uh, that will have helpful content um, and hopefully get us through this this particular time period. Anyhow guys, um, so I don't want to talk too much again. Let's get to the question. So in the space provided below, draw and label a diagram to show the six stages of the accounting cycle for the owner of Ziggy Shoe Shop, right? Um, and also, uh, I when I was testing this earlier, I realized if I have the side-by-side -side split, people falling on their phones might have a lot of trouble seeing. So I'm going to be switching back and forth between this and the solution. So I'm hoping that doesn't get too annoying. I apologize if it does, but it's just for the benefit of those who may only have access to a phone. All right. So the accounting cycle. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> Where am I? Right. Okay, cool. Okay. So <clears throat> now I didn't draw a diagram. I listed the stages. So the first is the accounting cycle. Is that whole cycle that where you have to record all these transactions and process them and and all the work, right? And ultimately financial statements. So we know financial statements is the last one. But the first thing that has to happen is you have to have transactions interactions with your customers with your suppliers that give rise to well information and the information will be captured on source documents so i have transactions that give rise to source documents if you want you can just put source documents but uh, well, a source document would imply a transaction as a code so put in transactions may be considered to be redundant but then again maybe not all right so source documents next what has to happen you have to record them where's the first place you're supposed to record anything accounting wise in your books of original entry or books of prime entry, otherwise known as journals. So you have to origi uh, original entry or journalize any transactions. All right. Yeah, sorry about speaking too fast. I I'm feeling a bit rushed because um, I had to reorganize my schedule because I had to, anyhow, sorry, let me get back to the question, but I'm, I apologize if I'm rushing, right? After your journals, you have to send it to your T accounts and that's called posting to your ledgers. After you post the ledgers and you have all the T accounts with the debits and credits, well, we have to make sure those things are correct. That's where extracting a trial balance comes in. Now, we know that a trial balance could still balance even if there are errors, right? I talked about that, I think, in, um, was it question four? I think it was question four of this same thing, right? So you, you can check back in the recent video, you'll see it there, right? Um, or maybe question one, question one. Sorry, it was question one, not question four. This is question four. <laughs> Um, and then um, five, you have to do your adjusting and your closing entries. So your accruals, prepayments, provision for bad debts, provision for depreciation and transfer into the income statement, all that happens. And then you have your financial statements, right? There are, I have seen other versions of the accounting cycle that have more than six steps. And the, the differences really have to do with this step here. So after the, they do the adjustments, they have something called an adjusted trial balance to make sure no errors were made. And after that, you do your closing entries and then you have a post-closing trial balance to make sure no errors were made. And then you do your financial statements. But once again, they ask for six steps. This is what you do. Uh, the question I, I know some of you all might ask is, if you didn't draw a diagram, would you not get all your marks? And it's seven marks, right? Um, for six steps. So I guess one mark has to be for presentation and um, correct order. And I guess, um, pres uh, I said presentation already, right? Completion, right? Um, I think if you just list them in, in a proper order, you're, you're gonna get at least six of those marks, if not minimum five, right? I don't see the need for a diagram, but I understand it's a cycle. That's why it's called the accounting cycle, right? So I can retract my statement. A, a diagram does help, right? Okay, going on to part B, identify the type of business organization described in each situation below. So what types of business organizations do we know? Sole traders, partnerships, limited liability companies. We also know about cooperatives, statutory corporations, um, non-profit organizations. So let's take a look here. So A, part, sorry, B part one, a large a large size enterprise with many employees owned by a single person. That's the key phrase here, a single person. Anytime it's a business entity owned by a single person, that's a sole trader. Next, shares in this type of business cannot be sold by shareholders on the stock market. So shares cannot be sold, oops, 
right, on the stock market. So once you see shares, we know we're talking about a limited liability company. And if they cannot be sold on the stock market, that means it's a private limited company. So a private limited company. If it was a public limited company, you could sell your shares on the stock exchange. Um, three friends operate a business in which the actions of one of them is binding on the other two. Well, once you have more than one person and they operate in a business and the actions are binding on each other, that's a partnership for sure. All right, and number four, an organization operated by members, so maybe cooperatives, which provides services to members, maybe corporate scheme, often financed by donations, fundraising, and ah, subscriptions. Once you see subscriptions, you know it's non-profit, right? Cooperatives don't have subscriptions. They have, this cooperative sell shares. So non-profit organizations. All right. Okay. So let me scroll down here so I can have item C a little more visible. Okay. So let's, and also let's scroll down here. So I'll do C part one and C part two, not together per se, but I'll let you see, right? So this is identify one internal user of accounting information and state how this is used by that user. Well, this being accounting information and identify one external user and show how the information is used by that user. Okay, so one internal, one external. So what I did is I did four because I like to give options to people, right? So internally, you're gonna have, sorry. Well, okay, let's talk about that, accountants. Accountants are the ones who prepare the accounting information and they can prepare reports from it. Um, for whom? For management. Management needs to make sure the company is meeting its objectives. And if not, well, what do we have to change? What do we have to do differently? How do we adapt, right? So managers to assess the effectiveness of operation, decide if any change is unnecessary. Accountants prepare the reports, analyze performance and report to management. Next, I have employees. So if you are working for a company, you might want to make sure the company is doing well and its, it's, con its continued existence is you know, reasonable, reasonable to be expected. Or if, you're, if you think that the company is going to curtail operations, maybe you should jump ship and get a new job somewhere else. All right. And board of directors. The board of directors for limited companies is that group of people who plots the overall strategy or strategies for the company. And they need to assess, well, are we meeting our targets based on certain financial um, feedback? All right. So there are many other internal users, um, but more or less, you see, to me, <laughs> you use accounting information to make decisions. The type of decision you would make would be a bit different. So that's what they're kind of trying to get at here. What is this particular user's um, desire for the, what, why do they desire the information? What are they going to use it for? All right. Now, external. So I started with creditors. Sorry, no, I missed that one. Okay. Creditors are people to whom the company owes money. A creditor might be interested in the financial health or solvency. Can this company pay off its debts? Because if they owe, if the, if the company owes the creditor money, the creditor wants to know, well, do I call them to ask if everything's okay? Do I insist they pay me back sooner rather than later? Or can I relax because they're rolling in cash? I have also auditors. So auditors are those people who come in to kind of double check the books and ex which, which you call express an opinion on the well I have here the integrity of the accounting policies and the information presented right they kind of give assurance to the board of directors and the shareholders and any other external users that the company's internal processes uh, are, are good they are intact and the information presented is accurate and fair investors so an investor is somebody who puts money into a company to earn a return to get money back to get more money back than you put in. So you want to know, well, is this company doing well? What's, what, is, what is its profitability like? How much assets does it have? How much liabilities? Can they take on more liabilities? Are they paying the interest on the liabilities? Are they paying the capital, the principal back on the liabilities? What's going on? All right. And a tax body. So in Trinidad, we have the BIR, Board of Inland Revenue. You all who watch movie, movies might hear about the IRS in the States, the Internal Revenue Service. So there... Their, their, their interest is knowing, okay, did this company make profit? Okay, how much? Do they owe us tax? Then they need to pay. Have they paid? Yeah, okay, good. Have they paid too little? Well, they need to pay more. And we're going to charge them. All right. Now, um, <clears throat> let's see what else is going on here. I've seen some notifications on my phone. But I can't deal with that right now because I am talking to you all. <clears throat> Okay, each of the following transactions below violates an accounting concept of principle. State the concept of principle being valid. Okay, so Mr. Peters paid the water bill for his private home 
and recorded it as a business expense. So anytime the owner uses resources from the business for his own personal use, that's drawings. You're not supposed to record as an expense. That is violating something called the separate entity concept or the business entity concept. What that means is that the business is seen as a separate legal entity from its owners. As such, its accounting records are to be kept separate from that of its owners and they're not supposed to intermingle. So they're violating, the owners violating the separate entity concept or the business entity concept. Oh, sorry, I didn't look at the, <laughs> I gave away the answer. So Eon, a receivable, a debtor, is unable to pay due to bankruptcy. Hmm. And the business is likely to lose $8,000. Management refuses to create a provision for doubtful debts or to write off this amount as a bad debt. So this thing here tells me that they're violating prudence. Once it's provision for bad debts or doubtful debts, most times, if not all, it's going to be prudence. Right? The prudence concept Prudence is the exercise of caution in the face of uncertainty. In the times we are living right now with this coronavirus, COVID-19, you're not going to go to any big gatherings. Um, you're going to make sure and wash your hands because you are uncertain if you've picked up the germs. You, do, you don't know somebody else had. I have bringing nobody in my class until this thing has cleared up. I do not know if anybody has been exposed, right? So I'm exercising caution in the face of uncertainty. The business here is supposed to create a provision when, for doubtful debts. If it, if it thinks it might get back the money, then it needs to write off or make an adjustment to, to the receivables balance. It's not doing that, therefore it's by the thing prudence concept. In order to report higher profits for the financial year, management changed its method of calculating depreciation from straight line to reducing balance. Mm -mm. That's a violation of the consistency concept. So we know what to be consistent means. Do the same thing every time. The consistency concept says that when treating with specific accounting items from one financial period to the next, treat with them in the same way. Don't just change your, your, your methods of calculating stuff willy-nilly. If there was a, a significant or important enough reason for doing so, fine. But don't be going back and forth doing methods just to enhance how your profitability looks. That's ridiculous. Uh, last one. Revenue earned in Jan 2018 was not recorded until the money was actually received in the following financial period in Jan 2019. Okay, no. That's violating the accruals concept. When you earn the money, right, when you earn the revenue, regardless of when you receive it, you need to put it as being earned in your income statement, right? That is the accruals concept, hands down. And same thing with expenses. The expenses incurred in the generation of that revenue need to be reported as being incurred in the period in which they were incurred, regardless of if you paid any or any at all, right? And finally, all right, as the last thing here, with reference to the violation in D part 2 above, what is the effect on the income statement? D part 2. Oh, this is where the company didn't create the provision of or increase it by 8,000 or write it off. Right, so if the company doesn't do that, what's going to happen is that, so when you create or increase the provision, you have to debit the income statement, which we, debiting the income statement is basically putting an expense in it. And what do expenses do to profit? They reduce it. So, and same thing with bad debts. If we, when we write off a bad debt, we, we debit bad debts, credit the debt, and then when we transfer, we debit income statement, credit bad debts. But if we're not doing that, it means we're going to be not including an expense in the income statement that should have been included, which means expenses are going to be too low. And if expenses are too low, profit is too high. All right. Boom. Um, what? Right, so net income will be overstated by 8,000 if the debt is not written off or if no provision is made for the amount owed by year. Okay, guys. All right, guys. There you have it. That's basically it for the, well, the question four. And this was the, I did, I did the questions out of order for, for whatever reason. All right. So um, I hope these videos are helping you. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. Um, if I made any mistakes anywhere, leave a comment below. I always try to, I do, like I said, I never profess to know everything. I do make mistakes from time to time. I did double check myself to make sure it was the right thing. So, but if you have any questions, any queries, any comments, any dissenting views, I'm, I'm very much open to hearing them and to addressing them, right? I don't know everything and uh, you asking questions helps to make me a better teacher, okay? Anyhow guys, so stay safe and I will see you guys next time.